All right, let's see what we're gonna cover today. Oh my God, I love this game. Let's create the Resident Evil 4 health bar using widget blueprints. Widgets are basically a canvas for you to place whatever graphics you want directly on screen. You can also attach them to characters so it follows them around, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. In the last video, we were able to print string our name onto the screen, basically from scratch. But that's just the tip of the iceberg because today we're gonna dive deep and learn all about Unreal Motion graphics. So we're gonna open up the same project as before and let's get things started by creating a widget. Let's right click on the content browser, go to user interface, click on widget blueprint. We're just gonna give it a basic name like basic UI and you'll notice this star here on the basic UI that means it hasn't been saved to the project. So if we close out the editor and open it back up, it won't be here. Let's just save all, go to file and save all. That way the star goes away. And if it crashes or something like that, it'll still be here. Go ahead and double click to open that bad boy up. So widget blueprints are split into two sections. You've got the designer tab on the left here. And this is where you handle all of the visual aspects of how the widget's gonna be displayed on screen. And here on the right, we have the same event graph from normal blueprints. This is once again, just where you show the engine what to do with the blueprint during gameplay. But let's not forget our goal for today, the Resident Evil 4 health bar. It's basically an underlying graphic, a health bar, and a name off to the right, so it shouldn't be too hard. Let's go back to the designer tab and here under hierarchy is probably the first thing that you should know. The topmost item on the hierarchy is actually gonna be behind the lower items on the hierarchy. They kind of stack on top of each other. So the top one in the hierarchy is behind the ones on the bottom and it's a little confusing, but don't worry, you can reorder the hierarchy at any time. But let's start off right and let's start off with the component that's gonna be behind the rest. And that's gonna be our underlying graphic or an image. Up here in the palette, we can go ahead and just search for an image, go ahead and drop that right onto the canvas panel and you'll see it appear on the top left of your widget. I'll include the image that I'm using in the description box below in case you wanna make exactly what I make. So we haven't set the image to what we wanna use in the brush and by default, it just wants to render a white rectangle. A brush is just a fancy way of saying image that's gonna be drawn. All of these options here are specified in the brush. And actually we haven't imported our image into the engine yet, so let's go ahead and minimize the widget and we'll go ahead and import the image that we're gonna use for the graphic. Go ahead and select it and import it and it will automatically be imported into the engine as a texture. You'll see this little star here though, so we can go ahead and file, save all. That way we don't lose it, even if the editor crashes. Let's go ahead and go back to our widget and we'll go ahead and click here on image and we can search for the texture that we just imported. Click right here, I named mine rush help bar because I did rush it pretty hard when I was uh, deleting the background on there. And now that we've selected our image, the widget is good to go. But when we play, the widget doesn't appear on screen. Hold on, let me figure out what's going on. Ah, uh, Jovan D's calling again. Hello? Yo, Engine, why aren't you putting my widget on screen? Joe, what are you talking about? You never mentioned what you want me to do with the widget that you've been designing. All right, here's what I want. When my third person character blueprint begins play, I want to create a widget, specifically the basic UI widget. And do what with it? Oh, um, add that widget directly to the viewport. I got you, but you need to stop calling me and asking me to do stuff. Okay, now that we've communicated when we want the widget to be created and added to the viewport, when our game begins, our third person character blueprint will handle that. Let's test it out and play our game. And now we see the image is on screen, but it's really tiny. We can change the size really quickly by going back to our basic UI widget Go ahead and dragging on one of the corners and just kind of scale it to something reasonable. That way when you play, it'll be on screen and you can actually see it. Now it's a decent size, but it's on the top left corner of the screen. And you'll notice by default, every new thing you add to the widget, it's gonna be stuck way up on the top left. And we're gonna have to move that bad boy 
down to the bottom right, just like the real Resident Evil 4 has their UI. But to move that, we have to take a quick timeout so I can teach you about anchors. So video games nowadays are played on a ton of different devices and anchors are a built-in way to help the game scale their user interface to match different screen sizes. If you already know that your game is going to be played on the same screen size, you don't really have to worry about anchors, but I'm going to teach you about them anyways. Since we want our image to be placed on the bottom right, all we have to do is move this anchor to the bottom right of the screen. And we can totally ignore anchors, but I'll show you the problem with that. If we move our image manually with this position, X and Y, down to the bottom right, go ahead and compile and save, and you'll see it is on the bottom right. But if I scale the screen size from the right side, you'll notice it gets cut off. And if the screen is this shape, you actually won't be able to see the graphic. If I scale from the left side, you'll notice that the image kind of follows along as if it's on the left edge. Changing the anchors is really easy though. If we go back to our basic UI, all we have to do is click here on anchors. You'll see this is the top left, top middle, top right. We're just gonna use the bottom right. Go ahead and compile and save. Now we can see when we scale from the right, it'll follow along no matter what our screen size is. Okay, so now that we've done that, when we start our game, we have our specified image exactly where we want it to be, and it automatically scales with our screen size. But now I hear you say all that just for one image. Well, yeah, but all the hard work's done. Now all we have to do is make our name and health bar. For our name, we can go up to the palette, go ahead and select text, drag that right onto the canvas panel, go ahead and click on it. We'll anchor it to the bottom right, zero out the positions, We'll go ahead and move it exactly where we want it to be. I'm going to click on size to content. That way the bounds box will always surround our entire text. Change the actual text to something usable like the name Leon. And we can tweak our appearance here in the appearance tab. I'm just going to go ahead and change it to bold italic, maybe a size of something like 30. And we can change our outline size to something however we want it. We can even rave a little bit. Okay, but seriously, I'm just gonna use an outline size two. Go ahead and just change this to black. Next, let's add our progress bar. Same thing, go ahead and add that to the canvas panel. Click on it right here, and we're gonna go up, anchor it to the bottom right, zero out its position, and just move it exactly where we need it to go. If you don't like the size, you can go ahead and change the size here. I'm just gonna use something like 220 and we can change the color and the fill color and opacity. Just change it to a nice dark green. And I know it's just a straight bar instead of a curved bar, but trust me, setting up a custom progress bar is its own tutorial, and we can cover that in the future. So now we have our basic foundation set for our UI. And when we play, we do have our name and progress bar on the bottom right, but it's not showing our player's name or our player's health. It's just showing the exact way we designed it in the widget. But not to worry, it's really easy to link up our player character's name and health to the widget. There's actually two ways that come to mind immediately. And since this video is already getting pretty long, I'm gonna teach you the wrong way. Yay! Well, not really the wrong way, but the fast way. Let's go to the event graph for the widget, and we need to set up a variable for our player character so that we can get information from them. So the question becomes, how do we get our player character from the widget? Well, luckily there's a peer function called get player character that we can go ahead and use on the event graph. And we are gonna cast that to our third person character. And we're gonna do that when the widget is constructed. And after all that, we'll go ahead and promote this to a variable. Let's name that something like player. And now this here will be our player reference. Okay, rewind, that was a lot. What did we just do? So basically, this is what we just told the engine. When this widget is created, if you remember, that's when our third person character blueprint begins play, we're going to get the player character. And the player character is whichever character is being played and controlled by the player right now. We're gonna check to see if the player character is a third person character blueprint. And if our player character is a third person character blueprint, we're gonna set our widgets player variable to our player character. So now it doesn't matter if we have a million third person character blueprints in the level or if we spawn in even more than a million, our widget is gonna know which one of them is our player. Holy smokes, there's a lot of steps to get this stuff on screen. But luckily we only have to do one more thing for our name and health. 
Let's go back to the designer tab so we can bind our name and health to our player variables name and health. We'll click on our text here and under the content tab next to text, all we have to do is click on bind. We'll select player and we'll go ahead and bind our name to our player variables name. And now our widget's name is gonna be set to our player character's name. And you can see right off the bat, it's gonna automatically update here when you play the game. And we'll do the same for the progress bar. Go ahead and click on that and under percent, we're actually gonna bind that to our player's health. Compile and save. And now you'll see the progress bar is completely filled up since when we created our player's health, we set the value to one, which is equal to 100% health. So in real time, if our health changes or if our name changes, as of now, the progress bar and the name will update in real time while you're playing. Wow, that was a lot to go over. But in the end, we matched the classic Resident Evil 4 user interface, mostly. <laughs> You can always tweak the appearance later on to more closely match the original if you want there in the widget. Uh, but that's going to bring this video to a close. Thank you so much for watching the whole thing. I know this one had a ton of new things in it for beginners. So hopefully you learned something. And there's tons of free ways to help this channel like liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'm here to help you think like a game developer. So stick around for more videos like this.